You. Yeah, you. Get in here. You get, you, you get in here right now. Because... I'm back. Yes, I'm back. It's me. Your best friend, Derek Kristoff, a.k.a. Orville Noblick, a.k.a. Decisive, a.k.a. Dino Bravo, a.k.a. your best friend. I've returned. It's been a long time. And you deserve an apology. So I'm going to start today's episode off with a sincere apology. I'm sorry. I actually had a gross <laughs> moment a week and a half ago. My my number one compadre, Rob Baker, who lives in Winnipeg, Manitoba, the man who I am running all of this with, my partner in crime, he hits me up and... I start my morning with a text from Rob saying, do you know when we drop the blue boat? Now that's a significant question because the blue boat was the last project I released. So my, my brain told me maybe two months, two and a half months tops. He said, no, six months, six months. And I had to look it up. And I wish I didn't, because I realized I dropped the blue boat in February, February 22nd, March, April, May, June, July, and we're approaching August. So half a year, half a year. And it, and, and it freaked me out. I did not feel great about it, especially with Nobla Gardens. It's supposed to be a monthly uh a monthly, I, don't know, I can't think of the word right now. I, got, I have a million things running through my head right now. Um, I've, I set up my room to be, a, <laughs> for those of you watching this, if I even release the visual version of this, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I, th what's been holding me back too is I've, I did about two episodes of a podcast. No, maybe even just one. Born Again Kristoff, which the podcast is no longer called that. It's called The Macedonian. I'll get into why in a bit. I wanted a visual version of the pod. I just didn't feel right doing audio only. I'm happy with what I did as far as presentation is concerned with regards to the first episode. You know, I just kind of did a, found a stock image of a tape recorder. But, but all the shows that I love, Flagrant, Brilliant Idiots, Joe Budden podcasts, Burt Kreischer, Theo Vaughn, Your Mama's House, they all have studios. And I dream of one day having a studio on that level. But I know I'm a bit away, especially if uh, I'm on a one podcast every six month average. <laughs> so I decided to try and just, uh, we're in my writer's room in the basement of my house right now. Uh, I, I got rid of a big chair that I had here. My wife bought me some backdrops for my birthday and I got it set up. And I don't know how I feel about it yet. I got lights, uh, lights, I'm trying to do it. I got a good com camera, that's upstairs. I'm just using my phone for this episode because I felt like the tools were holding me back. I kept making excuses. Maybe I'm paying attention to unnecessary things. All that matters is getting started. You know, there are vloggers and podcasters on YouTube that it is like atrocious quality. There's bad green screens talking into their um, <laughs> their ear their Apple earbuds. So at least I'm doing a, a bit better in the quality department, though I haven't seen it yet. I have a mirror in front of me. No, sorry. Well, it's in front of me. It's behind the camera. So I can see if I run out of data on my phone. That's the operation we're running here on the Macedonian. But I tell myself, as this thing grows, and I stick with this, and the audience grows, this is something that we can laugh about in the future. When I finally do have a proper Knob Corp studio. And I own a building. My dream is to own a building in two years. And we're doing it proper. All that matters is I started. And it's 
June 20, July 28th, 2020. I'm trying to buy myself months. July 28th, 2023. And here we are. It's pretty makeshift and ghetto, but we can fix that. All that matters is that we're here and we're back and we're pumping out content for you fans who have been rolling with me since day one. Thank you for your patience. It's not easy being a supporter of mine, I understand. But no more. No more breaks, no more hiatuses. We're in the game now. What you see is what you get for the time being. And I know all of you are going to tell me it doesn't matter. And I thank you all for that. But I do feel great. I do feel great. Reason being, last Friday, I had my very first show. My, I, I haven't done a proper, decisive, headlining show in seven, eight years. The last one, I can't remember what year it was, but it was at the Waverly Hotel on College and Spadina in Toronto. And it was an atrocious show. Atrocious show. Uh, the attendance was bad. I promoted it poorly. My performance, thank God I did because my performance was poor. I had this idea of this extravaganza of stories and songs and and it was just a mess. I didn't rehearse. It was all last minute. It was, it's, it's just a memory I wish I could men in black out of my brain but it's there and it's because of that show I've been afraid to actually throw another one because that I, my head is a bizarre place it's a weird museum of <laughs> sadness and fear but I'm fighting it it's time to fight that and get back to what I believe I'm meant to do but that show has haunted me for a long time and anyone who was there yeah it's just it's it's bad but but I've made up for it my show last Friday at the Rivoli which if you all follow me on social media you know about because I promoted it ruthlessly and shamelessly to the point where I had to take a bit of a social media break. I just felt so social media out. But it was amazing. And I was afraid no one was going to show up. I, I sincerely believed that. I thought I would be performing for whoever's DJing for me, Adam Bomb and my wife. Like, I, I believed that nobody was going to come. I'm so grateful that I was wrong. The show was unbelievable. I was slightly short of a sellout. It's not a huge room, but a lot of fans from years ago showed, like, faces I didn't think I'd see. A lot of amazing surprises. There are people that drove three, four, five hours to come see me. And it, there were moments after when I was talking with people in the crowd after the show, I almost started crying. It was just, it was just beautiful. It was a moment that I needed. I, 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 I really needed it at that time because I've just been struggling with a lot. And I'm, I'm not using this to whine. You know, we're just getting settled in. We're just getting used to seeing each other again because it's been a few months. But I just, I needed it because honestly, this shit is hard. And, you know, success is not promised. It's a struggle. It's, there's more struggle than happy moments. So when you do have those happy moments, you just want to bring them in and, and hug them and tickle them and pat them. And horrible Chris Farley impression, but I, I just needed it. It gave me the confidence. It gave me the belief that this can be something. It already is something. I'm not saying I'm not grateful for what I already have, but I do believe this can grow. This can be powerful. These dreams that I've had since 13 years old can turn into something real. And it's not easy for a 43-year-old to jump back in the ring, but nothing is impossible. Well, it's never going to happen if I don't do it. If I keep sitting around and finding excuses to not do it and 
to not put my big boy pants on and hop back in, nothing's ever going to happen. Again, thank you to everyone who came to the show. It was just, it was insane. It was insane. I, I, I'm proud of my own performance. I, I didn't screw up any lyrics. <laughs> Maybe there was a couple of fumbles, but there were songs that I hadn't performed before, ever. Laundry Room. That might be hard to believe, but I've never performed that song before. If I Live to See Tomorrow, that even though that was the second last song of the set, that was the grand finale, because that was a challenge. Performing that song, that's like five minutes of straight rap. If you know that song, If I Live to See Tomorrow, here's a, here's a, here's a fun fact. I recorded that song at a studio called Fun, which is, oh, I keep checking to see if I'm running out of time. It's r owned by the rapper Timbuktu, who's incredible. He recorded and engineered a lot of my albums. Fantastic person. I love his studio. I love his sound. I recorded it as, at his place one afternoon. I just saw the movie 127 Hours with Franco, and, I, and the Sigara song plays over the final credits. And the moment I heard that song, I was like, I have to rap to this. It has to happen. So I went home, and I, I think I spent a week writing the song. And I booked the session, and my friend Kyle Lundy was with me. He would come to a lot of my sessions. And he's sitting on the couch, and the vocal booth was in a closet, literally. And I'm in tight, tight quarters, and I got my lyric sheet, and there was two pages. I think there's a moment where you can hear me flip a page. But it was just the mic check. Like, Tim just wanted to see if the mic levels were... Good. So you'd rap a couple bars, he'd find your spot and stop you and then go. Fortunately, the levels were just where I needed them. And I just went, went. And that whole song was recorded one take, first take. First take, one take. And if you listen, I don't know, it took so much out of me because it's, it's, it's a challenge to rap that song. And it's emotional and it, it sends a lot of memories through my noodles. And I finish, I say the last lyric, and I just kind of burst out of the closet door, which you can hear, we kept it in the song. And you can hear Kyle go, fuck. It was just one of those moments. We kept that in the song. I look at Tim, I think we got it. It was the fastest recording session of all time. I'd posted asking people, if you're coming to the show or if you were to see me perform, what songs do you want to hear live? And a bunch of people posted If I Live to See Tomorrow. So I thought, let's go for it. You know, it's, it, and it, it, it took me some time to get it memorized and get it back in the old lasagna. And I, I, I was scared. To, I almost scrapped it. But I thought, you got to push yourself. And I even, I think I apologized to the crowd too. Like a warning, there's a very good chance I'm going to fuck this up. So apologies in advance. But I didn't. I smashed it. And then even seeing, I try not to look at the crowd too when I'm performing because there's so many words you have to remember and the slightest thing will throw me off. But I remember seeing people in the crowd singing, al rapping along. Um, Chris Hall, a supporter of mine who has been around since day one, from London, Ontario, Mike Sorbera, I think that's how you say your last name. I'm sorry if that's incorrect. He was one of the few that requested the song. Lucio De Rose, a.k.a. Primary Sources, uh, I consider him a little brother. It was just crazy. And that was the moment. Uh, the, the Cade, the, the film director who's currently making a direct, uh, documentary on me, he was there filming the whole night. And I hope him and the other camera guys capture that moment because that that's something I would like to see again. That's something I would like to post. I'd never performed that before because it's not the easiest song to perform, but nailed it. Ended the set with When We Die, We Die Together. Pure sing-along. Ah, oh, man, I could just, I could gush for hours over this show. It was historical to me. To those who were there, thank you so much. You know, to those who couldn't be there, I'm going to be coming to you very soon. I'm trying to get back on the road, trying to make a tour happen. I think I have a fly in here. If you see a fly flying around, a bug's life, 
Oh, I didn't get to perform it, but I was ready. I had to cut it because we were running out of time because I did an early show. The show started at 8.15 p.m. I had to be off the stage at 10 p.m., everyone out at 10.30 for a Madonna dance party. My wife wanted me to perform A Bug's Life. I had to re-edit the instrumental because I don't have those sessions anymore. And I, I had it. I had it. And I practiced that song a lot, but I had last minute decision to cut it. I want to pause and try and get the fly out of here, but a bug's life. Maybe I'll call the <laughs> this episode that. I don't want these podcasts to be super long either. I'd rather do them more frequent at a shorter time span. And then you're also, the vlog is coming. I, everything is is back now. Every Everything is coming it's going to the, the train the train is back on the track. I'm just excited. And again, thank you to all of you who are with me and are sticking with me through this. Again, I repeat it's hard to roll with me because you never know what's going to happen, but I'm trying to keep this shit way more consistent now. I don't want to let you guys down ever again. And thank you for understanding. The Blue Boat. I got I got a list here of a few things to, t- <laughs> to talk about. I don't want to make this too crazy because this, this episode is more of a hello. And check out the, 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 the backdrop I designed. You see that? I, 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 I'm not just a fantastic hip hopper, which is what I call it. You may call it a rapper, MC. I call it hip hopper. I do a lot of things. I'm an editor. I'm a designer. I've taught myself a few things along the way. And check this out, man. Check the boat. Uh, I, I'm assuming the boat will be uh, traveling across Macedonian. You're probably wondering, why is this all called the Macedonian? Well, this is the perfect time for me to talk about it. I happen to be half Macedonian. That is my background. I preface all of this with, I am a horrible Macedonian. Um, so please, don't think that this is... How do I say this without sounding douchey? It's not like... I was going to say this proud Macedonian who, but I'm not, not proud. I'm, I just have never paid. I'm, I'm not great when it comes to, I'm also half French Canadian. (laughs) My mom is from Sudbury, Ontario. She was a bilingual. All of my aunts and uncles speak French, my cousins, everything. I've just, the Macedonian half to me is a little bit cooler. Not that Sudbury's not. So don't get mad at me, Sudbury. I'm going to be coming to perform in you in August, I think August 24th, for the Five Cent City Extravaganza. Mickey and Christian, two unbelievable guys. But we'll get into that later. We're not talking Sudbury yet. Next episode, we will. I, the Macedonian. Why this is all the Macedonian now? Because it's more of a tribute being paid to my grandfather. Uh, My grandfather came to Toronto from Macedonia, I believe in 1946. My dad was born in 49. 46, he came here. And I've always admired the immigrant story. And he came here with nothing, barely any money. He couldn't speak English, starting from scratch. He was able to open a restaurant uh, down near Dundas and Manning in Toronto, obviously. I, my first 10 years of my life until he passed away, I was raised by my grandfather. He was my best friend. No slight on my parents, but they both worked crazy shifts. You know, my mom working in a factory at five in the, starting at five in the morning. My dad worked the late shift. Uh, that just brought back Derek from Northcliffe lyrics. I'd walk around aimless, Lee, not a care in the world, and I'd lace up my byway slamming jams. You know, the half, the ones with the half basketball on the tongue. So my grandfather came here with nothing, and yeah, and that's what the Macedonian is. It's I'm kind of creating a parallel to my grandfather coming to a brand new country, to myself kind of returning to hip hop. The game is not what it was when I faded out eight or nine years ago. It's not the same. A lot of the artists don't even release music anymore. The journalists are gone. The record label people are different. Not that that means anything to me. No one ever 
<laughs> like gave me an opportunity as far as the industry is concerned. It's it's just it's a brand new it's a whole new world. I sometimes I feel like I don't even speak the language anymore. I'm still like backpack Billy trying to make his way in uh, trap land. <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking Astro World. Uh, well, Travis Scott dropped his new album today, but that is not important to the story. But that's essentially the idea of the Macedonian. I don't even know what's happening in the game anymore. I just woke up one day and I feel like I got on a boat, decided to, yeah, it's just it's a tribute to my grandfather and what he was able to build in this country. I feel motivated to really make it happen now. So hopefully me telling his story and telling my story inspired by his story can leave me a legacy that my children can be proud of, like I am of my grandfather. So that's basically the idea of the Macedonian. We'll definitely be talking about it more on the vlog which is also called the Macedonia. It's complete rebranding. Born Again Kristoff, it was a test. I didn't love it, but here we are. That's, yeah, that's essentially it. Um, there's a lot I want to talk about. Noblet Gardens and the Playground is coming back. Playground 3 is going to be dropping in two weeks. And Noblet Gardens 4... The follow-up to The Blue Boat, which is called Live at Massey Hall. It's going to be a big, 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 big boy. That's coming in four weeks. Uh, all of this will be announced on the next vlog, which should be out in a couple of days. But there's a lot coming. There is a lot. I have my group, my new group with Adam Bomb called Lo You. If you haven't seen or heard A Y M. AGF, it's our first single, our first explosive smash hit, stands for All Your Mothers Are Getting F-Worded. It's, I laugh every time I say it, I think it's one of the greatest titles in rap music. It's one of the greatest songs in rap music. In fact, Adam Bomb has one of the greatest verses. I, I feel like he did, mopped the floor with me on that song. I wish I could cannabis him, meaning I wish I could go back and re-record a verse knowing how fantastic his w is and how he is. He's not just one of my closest friends. He's one of my favorite rappers. And not Canadian rappers, rappers, rappers. The guy's a genius. Often I, I text him and I'm like, hey, I can't think of a rhyme for this. Can you help me out? And he's got something in seconds. It's gross how his mind works. I'm so jealous of him. We are starting a podcast called Blobfish. <laughs> so that's going to be dropping this w next, w this week, whatever, in, within a few days, let's just say a few days. I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. And I'm also starting a podcast with Mr. Moonshine, aka Rob Baker, called Bones, Bone Loafers. <laughs> so we got the Macedonian, <laughs> we've got the Macedonian podcast, we've got the Macedonian vlog, we've got Blobfish podcast, and we got Bone Loafers podcast. This is Knobcorp, baby, and we're coming. We're coming. Maybe I should explain to you what Knobcorp is, but we're going to wait. Again, I don't want to make this crazy long. I don't know how long I've been going for. I only really want these pods to be around like 10 minutes. I hope this doesn't stop my record. 28 minutes. See? The phone's been recording. I hope it's still recording. Hold on. Yup, we're recording. But now I'm afraid that it's going to cut out, cut out. I'm telling you guys shit that... Well, no, that's what we have. That's the relationship we have. It's, it's, it's complete honesty. That's what this is. Like I said, we're pretty makeshift. This is what it is. We've started. It's going to get better. No pilot television episode was fantastic off rip. Seinfeld's first few episodes were a slight shade of diarrhea. All that matters is we're here. New music is coming. 
but I'm just, I'm excited. I'll, I'm going to go deeper into, because some things happened with the blue boat, but I'll get deeper into that. I just wanted to do this. I wanted to see what the background looked like. I wanted to get, I just wanted to get back. And we're back. And I promise you it's going to get better. I'm going to get a better table. So my mic isn't propped up on books. Uh, I have people criticizing my mic. You guys can eat can eat my nuggets. This is a fantastic mic. I've also had people compliment the mic. Someone was supposed to send me a mic. A fan of mine hit me up and was like, I'm going to send you a proper mic. But it just it didn't work out. I, don't, I really don't know what happened. He kind of disappeared on me. I hope he's okay. Um, but that's cool. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it here. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. And if you threw a party, invited everyone you knew, you will see the biggest gift will be from me. And the card attached will say, Thank you for being a friend. Bum, 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 bum. Macedonia, out.